Ladies and gentlemen, the organist entertains. And a big hello from your old organ grinder friend, Robin Richmond. Well, by now, of course, Reginald Fort is back in Florida after his triumphant tour of Great Britain. But before he left, we recorded tonight's show, and you'll be hearing extracts from his Royal Albert Hall concert. But first, to open our programme, here's Eric Lord at the BBC Empress Wurlitzer with Cherokee. Eric Lord playing Cherokee, and now here's the melody and the voice we've all been waiting to hear. Everybody. There are times I know when it's not easy to wear a smile, but I'll do my best to help you to do so with a selection of smiling tunes. The first is Smile Darn You Smile. of course is an old record made many years ago but I'm happy to say that we have the voice in person here tonight in the studio and the voice and the person haven't changed one jot. Dear Reggie Fort, welcome. Hi, this is absolutely marvellous. I just don't know how to tell you how much I've been enjoying the whole short tour and the whole time I've had here in the old country. Um, it's been such fun to meet so many old friends like my a uh, nice girl who was secretary, uh, my secretary in the uh, good old days when I was the BBC staff organist, Molly Evans, and dear old Roy Plumley in Desert Island Discs, and uh, oh, I could talk for hours about it. Uh, it's most interesting uh, to compare London as I find it now with what it was in the days when we lived here, but the point is that I'm surprised at how much of it is exactly the same. I find all the people just as friendly and marvellous as ever. Um, 
What well, about the BBC, Reg? How's oh, that changed? Oh, <laughs> well, I suppose it has, but it's re certainly recalled a lot of absolutely marvellous old memories to, to be around. Um, the most important changes that I find are, first of all, something I still don't believe, and that's the wonderful clear air right in London, which I assure you is just as clear as the air in Florida. And in the old days, you'd have frightful fogs and everything else. Oh, well, we still get them. <laughs> <laughs> How about the Albert Hall, though, Ray? Yeah. Well, that, of course, was the biggest thrill of the whole um, time I've been over here. And what an ovation you got. And so that you at home, and who were not fortunate enough to hear this particular concert, uh, let's play you now um, a recording of that actual concert. And here is Reginald Fort at the Grand Royal Albert Hall organ playing Friedman's Slavonic Rhapsody. <laughs>
that was an extract from the Reginald Ford concert at the Royal Albert Hall, and what a marvellous reception he got, to be sure. Now, on these long train journeys we've had up and down the country, Reg, you've kept me amused and entertained with the most uh, uh, wonderful stories. Now, first of all, you must tell us about your name, Fort, and also about your father. Well, of course, it uh, doesn't sound very much like an English name. Our original ancestor came from Holland to England in 1686, and uh, his name in those days, I think, must have been F-O-O-R-D, because if you changed your uh, country at that time, you always changed your name, and that's how I get the name F-O-O-R-T. And now, do tell us, tell the listeners rather, because you've told me, but it's so marvellous about your father and how you became interested. Oh, in well, my life. dear old father was a farmer's son in Worcestershire, and of course in those days the sons all had to do the work on the farm, and my father hated farming and wanted to be an organist, so I believe he took correspondence and other courses and managed ultimately to get a job as an organist in Northamptonshire at a small parish church called Whedon, so you can be quite sure that I was going to be an organist even before I was born. Mm, and after that, of course, you went to the College of Music and you trained as a concert pianist, didn't you? Yes, I did quite a lot of time training as a concert pianist, and then they started to put what I regret to say I always think of as these comic organs into movie theatres, and uh, since then I've never looked back. You certainly haven't. Well, now, you, you were just talking about John Howlett. We've got a, a tape of his next. Do you remember John, of course? Oh, he's old, one of my oldest pals. Yes, he's still going strong. He, this, on this occasion, he's playing the Granada Tooting Wurlitzer, and it is Saint-Saëns, the Swan. Harlot playing the swan. Reg, uh, Reginald Ford, I always remember that you were a very great motor enthusiast, weren't you? Oh, that's always been my hobby. I never get tired of driving even in the rush hour in Chicago or Miami or New York. Uh, I've had a whole string of cars, the most famous of all of them being one of those marvellous old Bentley racing cars. Do you remember oh, that? yes. We yeah. used to go driving up and down to Canterbury and back when you were in there as a an organist. Yeah. You were telling me you've got two jobs at the moment, so you have to drive to them, don't you? In I have to, yeah, oh, yeah, sure. In America, you have to have your own car and drive everywhere in it. There's no other transport. 
Um, I have uh, one job where I play in a Presbyterian church on Sunday mornings. That's only five miles away. And then I have a big Jewish temple in Miami Beach, which is 25 miles away or thereabouts. And I naturally have to drive backwards and forwards to both of them. Mm. So in this so-called retirement, you seem to be busier than ever. I am. And I must repeat (laughs) for the listeners at home that Reggie hasn't changed one iota, which is quite fantastic. Well, now we pass on to the electronic. It's a Lowry electronic played by Brian Lake and the tune Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head. there from Brian Lake on the Larry and he made wonderful use of the percussion there didn't he I thought Reg, Reg yeah I thought it was absolutely first rate mm. you, you met him didn't you Brian oh yes oh sure I did I met him with Jim Miller and John Bellord oh, those, are the, those are the two lads who've been so helpful during this tour oh, yes. yeah sure so now um, when you go back to America to Florida you're going to resume the routine are you of playing in the churches there oh mm-hmm. yes I love it it's mm. most pleasant Tell us quickly that wonderful story you told me. I, I can't uh, give it away, but do you remember you found a cover over an organ and you went for a job? You remember that? Oh, that was in Chicago when we first got there. Uh, I wanted to get a some kind of a job, a nice steady one, uh, to get going as quickly as I could. And I heard that they wanted an organist up at the one of the three biggest Jewish temples in the world, Temple Sholom in Chicago. So I went up and saw the cantor who uh, took me up after miles of walking upstairs and things into a dark organ loft and pointed at something all covered up with a thick cover and when I pulled it, uh, pulled the cover off to my absolute great joy I found it was a huge four manual Wurlitzer organ <laughs> with, a, <laughs> with a horseshoe console. I was completely at home, got the job on the spot. <laughs> and did you play church music or the old tremors, you know? Oh, I'm sorry, I, I played my usual popular classics, is, which is what they mostly want, mm. or they did in that particular temple. But we played a lot of bark and stuff with no tremulence on it. It's hard to find. Super. I wonder if you'd have played the Blue Tango, because that's the next number we have on the program, and it's played on a world. It's not probably as big as the one you played, Reg. It's the Granada Clapham Junction and the organist, John Mann. Thank you. 
down at the Granada Clapham Junction, were they? So, you know, one thing I think is a pity, we didn't have time to get you over to Holland Hills. Oh, I regret that very much. I would have loved to have gone over and tried it again, but we just have... I haven't had time. Your molar. Yes. Yes, your molar. What a shame, yes. Well, there we are. I tell you what, uh, Robin, I really must take this opportunity of congratulating you on the tremendous revival of popularity of the... Uh, theatre organ because I think it's almost entirely due, due to you and I want to say hi for the oh. wonderful success you've made of this organist Rich, entertains. You embarrass me and coming from you that's a compliment indeed. Thank you so much. Anyway now we go back to the BBC theatre organ Mark III, the Wurlitzer and it is Twilight Time played by Eric Lord. <laughs> Lord, twilight time. Well, this is where we have to say goodbye. I hope only au revoir to Reggie, Reginald Fort. I can tell you, Robin, I've enjoyed it all so much, and especially being on this programme. I'm definitely going to come over again for another visit. You do that, and you bring Betty. That's yes, dear so. Reggie's will. wife next time. Fine. Thank you very much, Reginald Fort. But before you go, let's have one more extract from the Albert Hall concert. You're playing the Baldwin, aren't you? The same one that you have in your home. Oh, right? yes. And it is a nice piece so typical of your orchestral style playing uh, Chrysler's Caprice Viennoise.
Yes, the master touch of Reginald Fort playing Capri's Viennois. Well, that's about all tonight, but I would just like to remind all you organ nuts that our second, The Organist Entertains LP, is out, and it is on BBC Records, number REC 110M, REC 110M, from your shops or from the BBC. Well, until our next merry meeting, same time next week, from producer Charles Kraft Maxwell and me, your old organ grinder, Robin Richmond. <laughs>